Sebastian Swart has always been close to the sea, like he is now on this late summer day on Sweden's west coast, where Sebastian, among other researchers, is making preparations to be able to reveal what is going on in the coldest and hardest to reach place on Earth, Antarctica. Because we need to know more about what is happening around the South Pole in Antarctica and under the ice there, now that climate change is a reality. And for reaching that new knowledge, Sebastian has chosen underwater robots. Every time that they go out at sea, uh, they're definitely taking a little bit of emotion uh, from me with them, uh, because we really hope that one day we're going to get those robots back and that they've really done their mission successfully. Today, he is joining the launch of his University of Gothenburg's colleagues' robot. Sebastian's own robots are far away in the southern hemisphere. The idea is to send these robots under the ice in Antarctica to measure the properties of the water, temperatures, and currents. If they change, the whole Earth can change. But it's not easy to make these robots capable of surviving here in extreme darkness, extreme cold, cut off from the world. Sebastian Swart is constantly thinking about this, how to get his robots with their own computer power to complete the mission and make it back with these vital measurements. Born and raised in South Africa, in Cape Town, Sebastian has already seen the effects of new weather. In Cape Town, they have experienced a very long period when the clouds refused to drop the rain the time referred to as the drought. Absolutely, the drought in Cape Town has been very serious. Uh, you know, we had a period of three years with almost no rain. Uh, we had to go from just using water naturally, uh, from drinking, bathing, watering the garden, cleaning our cars, to using almost none. It does bring about uh, some fear, uh, the fact that the, the climate is changing, that it may do these kind of events and cause these severe droughts in Cape Town. It does make people worry. It makes them to think a little bit about what is actually happening in their surroundings and the environment, and maybe what they're contributing towards climate and how it may change. And to understand these changes, we must understand what is happening under the ice in Antarctica. For the mighty waters here take care of enormous amounts of carbon dioxide and heat from the entire planet. What happens in Antarctica, therefore, affects all countries, South Africa as well as Sweden. A few years ago, Sebastian began building a laboratory with a workshop in Cape Town. Here, his robots are even now being equipped with instruments for measuring the sea and computers powerful enough to learn to find their way under the ice. And Sebastian himself has made 10 trips to Antarctica. And measurements of the air in Antarctica and the broadening of the ice already exist. But under the ice, completely uncharted waters await. So many things can go wrong with these robots under the ice. Uh, they can touch the ice in the wrong way and break off some valuable sensors or its communication means, or they're just going to get lost under the ice and disappear forever, and we won't hear from them again. We've actually got basically no observations of what's going on under the ice. And yet the under ice areas of the Antarctic are enormous. They're bigger than the whole of the continent of Antarctica. And so what we really need to do is plug that big knowledge gap that we have of no understanding of what's going on in the ocean under ice. And we hope that these robots and these gliders are going to be the first to collect those observations under the ice where it's so difficult to observe the ocean. 
So with the data that these robots will be collecting, we really hope to derive the density of the ocean and how the ocean flows at transporting heat and other properties around the ocean. And of course, we really want these robots to come back from under the ice all in one piece.